Cool. Hey, everybody. Sean Scahan here, and I have episode eight of the Total Hockey Training Podcast. And before I introduce my next guest, I just want to remind everybody, trainheroic.com, search Total Hockey Training. That's my year-round strength and conditioning program for hockey players at all levels. And right now we're rolling in the off season and we're continuing to do that. And yeah, it's uh, free for seven days. And then if you want to jump on, it's $39 per month. We have a lot of uh, really a, a wide assortment of players on there. I have players from Europe, the USHL, the um, um, OHL, several in professional hockey leagues and also young players as well. But I want to introduce my next guest. Um, very fortunate to have Nico Kapitanovic on today. Currently, Nico is the assistant coach at Creighton Durham High School, and he also is the assistant general manager of the Bismarck Bobcats of the NAHL, and I believe he also scouts for Tri-City of the USHL. Nico, unbelievable person, and it's great to have you on. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me on. Uh, on. It's going to be fun. Nice. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're from Wisconsin, um, but tell tell us how, you know, obviously people that know you, your passion for the game is contagious. Tell us where that came about. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I guess being from southeastern Wisconsin, uh, you know, the hockey is not the, the best down there um, in the Milwaukee area. So play AAA hockey down there. High school hockey isn't uh, the greatest down there in Wisconsin. As a grand scheme of things, I will say Wisconsin high school hockey is getting a little bit better. Um, but still, it's kind of the same status quo that it was back when I was playing down there. So play AAA hockey. Um played in the North American League, went to play uh, D3 hockey at UW-Eau Claire, was fortunate enough to win a national championship there uh, my junior year. We actually have our 10th anniversary of our national championship team coming up here um, in a couple of weeks. All the boys are getting back for our, our golf outing in Eau Claire, so it should be a, should be a really good time. But uh, That's awesome. Kind of uh, moved to the city. Uh, after got involved coaching at Eden Prairie Bantam Double A's right away, and um, from there coached there for about five years. I went into the high school ranks and um, was scouting in the USHL pretty much ever since I came over here. Hooked on with the Madison Capitals with a couple of Eau Claire alumni that were a part of the team, like Luke Strand and Troy Ward and Keith Paulson, pretty much that Mankato group now. Um, I know Keith Keith Paulson. Madison. Yeah. Keith Paulson, yeah. um video coach it's, in Iowa for a while. Wow. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable guy. Um and then I went to scout with Sioux City uh, for a couple of years and hopped on with the Bobcats and been with Tri City now for almost five years. And I think Bismarck almost six six years or something like that. So um yeah, I mean I love it going from where hockey isn't that big back home. So like being fortunate enough to coach at, you know, now two prominent high schools in uh, Minnesota, it's pretty, it's pretty contagious, I guess, being around those kids, uh, you know, especially from me growing up in a town of like 1200 people. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's, that's great. So currently you're the assistant coach with Creighton Durham. Um, yeah, talk about working with Coach Funk. Like, I've always liked Funker. Um, you know, what I liked about him is that I remember he was watching Pee Wee games like when he first started coaching at Creighton. And I think, I don't know, I think, you know, not necessarily recruiting players, but showing a presence that, like, you care. And I think, I don't know, my opinion, I think some high school hockey coaches just, you know, want to coach their team and whoever comes for shows up for tryouts, great. Then we'll make our team. But I think high school coaches, like I know you do as well, show an interest in the youth players and, you know, watching the game and seeing who's coming. I, I think that goes a long way. Like talk about working with Funker and 
you know, being around Cretan and that culture a little bit? Yeah, I would say um, working with Funk's awesome. Um, he's a hell of a human being. Uh, really, the the boys love him. Um, you know, and he's athletic director now at, at, at Creighton too. And just being around the school when I go into his office and stuff, just uh, every kid at the school, um, you know, there's about 93% of that student body plays a sport at the school. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whether it's a girls basketball player, hockey player, lacrosse player, softball, whatever, you know, they all show him a ton of respect. They really like him. Um, and it's easy to see why, you know, he really cares about the, the kids, um, puts a lot of time into it. I'd say from a, a hockey standpoint, he's really good at uh, communicating with the players. Um, he's really good at teaching them, um, you know, how to be also a, a, a young adult and grow up and, and good values the really good values of how to create uh, really good young men in our locker room. Um, and, you know, he's, he's, there isn't a player that won't know um, where he sits at the current moment. I think he's very fair um, in that regard. And, um, you know, he, he allows me to coach too and uh, do my thing. So I, I give him a ton of respect and, and, and credit to do that. Not a lot of uh, head coaches would, allow uh you know assistant coach to step in when i i did in my first year was last year and i didn't really i haven't worked with him ever until that and he just he kind of let me step in and you know be my own guy and my own coach and um a lot of i would say high school coaches may have uh an ego uh mm-hmm. where they're like they wouldn't do that where um he has no ego he cares about the players and um there's a really nice culture at, at Creighton, I would say. The the school and the athletic portion, the the want to win and be successful at the school is pretty contagious. Um obviously there's you know some very notable alumni at the mm-hmm. school, such as, you know, Ryan McDonough and like Joe Maurer, obviously, like yeah. pretty big fans. But um they the school really cares about uh, the, like the culture of winning and, and success. And I think I'm a firm believer if you're, you put yourself around uh, people that want to be successful in life uh, and you spend a lot of time with that, there's a better chance that you're going to be successful. So um, that's a, that's something really nice, but Funk's, uh, Funk's amazing. Awesome. That's great. Um, you guys had a, a really good run last year into the, into the, State tournament, I think uh, fourth place, third place. Yeah, fourth place lost to Andover in that dreaded third place game that nobody <laughs> wants to be a part of. I remember watching that game. Yeah, um, yeah. Talk about you know one thing I didn't mention too. You work with Blue Army. Um, you work with Blue Army in the fall, in the spring, and the summer. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, I when they brought it up to me to, to coach in, in blue army, um, it was kind of a no brainer for me. And this is a few years ago. I mean, our first blue army team, we had players and I'm going to probably leave some out that are going to be mad that I leave them out. But I mean, we had players like Jackson Hallam, you know, Jared Wright, yeah. uh, who I was close enough to be able to coach at St. Thomas again too, but uh, Grant is uh, Hunter Jones and Garrett Horsehogger, like those guys are all Division One hockey players, and that was our first team we had at Blue Army. So I was like, oh wow! Yeah. But um, it's nice to be able to coach kids from different uh, associations and not just like your own. Um, I think it challenges me as a coach and keeps me. Uh, which that's something that I a reason why I really like doing it is because I'm getting these players to may not know me they may know of me i know of them we've never met and now i got to see in a short time like what gets them to tick and what their tendencies are how they play how they interact with hard coaching how they interact with soft coaching like how you need to coach them to get the most out of them and then um you know i tell my guys that every year any group i have i'm like i hope you know 
I teach you something here or we learn something here as a group that, you know, and if you even beat us at Cretan by doing so, like, good for you, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, so I've been able to build a lot of relationships with, with a lot of those players and um, been able to help them along the way um, into the junior ranks. Um, and we've had a lot of kids from our Blue Army teams playing the USHL or North American League. So it's been fun to watch those kids grow. But um, it's it's just – it's awesome just being around kids that you really don't know. And mm -hmm. um, so, like I said, it's, it's a good test to um, – because as a coach, I think you got to continue to grow and learn. Um, I don't think – and I always think an NHL coach is saying the same thing too, you know. So – um, that really helps me grow and learn. And, and as kids, um, you know, things change and they're raised differently from parents and all that stuff adds up to kind of what the product you're going to get out of the human on the ice. So um, I really enjoy doing that. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I love that. And yeah, I think from what I know from you, like you have that ability to connect with your players in a short amount of time, you know, like you, you're like you you mentioned your guys and you know i think that's impactful because you know you do have that ability to connect with these guys you know where does that come from is that your, is that from your passion for the game is that from you know these kids just embracing your coaching style like what do you think about that yeah i think um you know i obviously i love the game i think it um a lot comes from just as I've, since I've been here and, and been involved in the game, you know, I'm probably a better coach than I was a player. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the, I think it's just so many kids get uh, communicated with, oh, he's the best right now. And he's like 14 or like, you know, this kid's not going to make it. He's 14, you know, like, and where people, everybody grow like they develop at different ages and, and things change. And there's, there's a ton where I've seen it, where there's a lot of players that were some of the best Bantam players coming up that like, aren't even playing the game, anymore, mm -hmm. you know? So I think it's just important to set, you know, a precedence where you're, you know, I'm, I am like a player's coach, but I also I draw the line between like, I'm not their friend, you know, I'm their coach. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think players respect that, you know, and then when they move, you know, later on into, into college and they're playing in college and I'm going to watch them play games like then the relationship changes a, a, a little bit there, you know, cause I'm not coaching them anymore. Like I'll give them my two cents of what I saw, but, they're hearing enough from, you know, their own coaching staff and stuff too. And that's part of their growth as well. So you kind of turn those relationships continue to grow as they continue to play. But um, I think it's just, I have a, I really enjoy just being along for the ride with players mm -hmm. um, and just watching them go play college and accomplish those goals. I mean, every kid wants to play the game as long as they, they can for the most part. They're, otherwise they're probably not, you know, putting in the time that these kids are to be successful in Minnesota. Right. So mm -hmm. um, just being along for the ride and watching them play and, you know, any given weekend I can go watch a college game and go watch some player I coach and just be like that how they've grown since they were like 15 or 16 or whatever. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool to, to see. So that's probably the reason why I care so much about it is just to, it's just fun to be just along for the ride with, with those kids and then be able to watch them play and accomplish their, their dreams, honestly. That's incredible. And I can just speak from a, a personal perspective, just from my own son, he, he, he feels that, that level of care and that, <clears throat> that level of um, trust and just friendship. And I, I really appreciate that, but going into that. So talk to me about, you know, maybe there's something you don't want to share because it's, it's something you keep between you and your players, but what is, what is simple game? Because I know my son has SG on his sticks, you know, like what, what, what is that? And I, you know what, you might put that in a hashtag or something, but like, you know, 
explain that to me and what that means to to you and your guys, I should say. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, I think a lot of people, it's a hockey and it's a life mantra too. I mean, I think a lot of people overcomplicate things in life. And I think a lot of people stress the small things in life and they don't put enough onus on being present uh, in life. Um, you know, I say it like in my sales job too, like I'll get a sale and I'll just be like simple game boys. But, <laughs> you know, like I think it, it, there's a lot of things that go to it. You know, one, it's, it's by doing the right thing and taking the right steps, whether it's your training on the ice preparation, practicing, um, you know, being a good son, uh, brother, you know, grandson, all that stuff, you know, classmate, all that stuff, like life should come easy for you and things, good things should happen. So like that simple game, like by you doing that stuff, like you should get that outcome. And I think the more, as I alluded to, the more people think about like, oh, I got to do this. I got to score these many points. I got to do this. I got, you know, like where, like if you just do all the little things, day in and day out and and like i said in life and and through the process of playing the game like good things should happen and on the flip side when good things should happen you should it shouldn't be a surprise like it should be almost you expect uh for those good things to happen so there is no big celebratory when good things happen because you doing the necessary steps should make it a simple game if you will so it's kind of like i say it it's you know the boys like it it's it's funny too but it really is more of a like a mantra to you know really to try to stay present and um because i really think that if you can't if you can't appreciate the hard times that you have in, Mm -hmm. in life and in hockey, I really think it's hard to appreciate when it's, when it's going really good in life and hockey. So um, that's kind of where that comes from. I love that. It just, it just reminds me of like, you know, all these pros that I I got the opportunity to work with the, the, the really good ones embrace the monotony of the day-to-day grind and love for the game it's it's doing the things <clears throat> over and over again and like you said it's the process you know there's a reason why guys like Nick Saban or Belichick talk about the process and I, I think that's I think that's important I think you know even even with these kids playing high school hockey whether it's 24 games or they get to play 30 games it's embracing the monotony of getting up early for school going to school you know, eating breakfast, eating lunch, hydrating during the day, going to practice, getting your rest, going to bed early, like over and over and over again. If you set yourself up for success by doing that stuff and embracing that kind of quote grind, you know, things are going to happen better for you. Instead of one, instead of, you know, thinking, well, I got to score, I have to be on the power play, I have to, you know, get a I got to have a better goals against average stuff like that. So I think that's important to, to, to kind of go with there. That's good stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So basically, you know, if you go to like a game or something, you might see Nico in the stand. So wh- what do you, what are you doing there, Nico, when you're not say coaching for Creighton or you're coaching for blue army, you, you know, you're in the stands, you're scouting, you're scouting for Bismarck, you're scouting for tri city. Talk about that and like how my, I'm curious, you know, I talked to another, I talked to Tanner Grinner um, recently. He, he works for, um, I want to say Chippewa Steel and Green Bay Gamblers. So how, how do you balance that? You know, I, I, you watch a ton of hockey, especially in Minnesota. How do you balance that? You know, how do you wear those different hats while you're scouting? And, and tell, talk to me about your scouting process. Like, what are you looking for? You know, Stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. First, I have a very supportive wife, which allows me to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, she coaches uh, 
the yeah. girls varsity team at Blake too. So she That's loves right. it. So it's good. But um, yeah, I think it, it's uh, first when you, you need to, whoever your coach that you're scouting for, like you need to understand your staff, uh, yeah, like the, the, the staff that's coaching them every day. So that was something that I, it took a little bit to learn um, because I may, I may really like a player um, for Bismarck, but like, is our head coach, like Lane Sedeby, is he like going to really like that player? You know, Mm -hmm. is he going to fit into like the way he coaches? So like that kind of, you know, is, that's something I, I would educate like someone who's getting into scouting. Like that, you need to learn that first. Right. Um, and then, you know, scouting in the North American league, if you want to be a successful uh, organization, and I'm very fortunate that I get to work with two very successful organizations in tri city and Bismarck in both leagues, but you, it's hard. The North scouting for the North American league is hard. Like you got to find those guys who are like, right on the line of like could play in the USHL may benefit him to play more minutes in the North American league for a year or so. Um, you know, may not be the best to be in the USHL have all the other tools, like a division one player that may not make it, or maybe you have a kid who plays a year or two in the North American league. Then he goes to the USHL. Like you got to find those guys and the guys who are hovering on the line are, you know, th- those are hard. And then in the North American League, it's a tender league, you know, where the USHL draft is all draft. Mm-hmm. So now you need to find that you identify the talent, but then you got to go build the relationship with the kid, with the parents. Um, and now you got to get them to sign the tender because then majority of the time, the kid has, you know, probably eight, five five to eight other offers from yeah. so now you're like now you need to sell your program to to the kids too so and the family and <clears throat> um that's where i'm fortunate with bismarck because everybody knows about bismarck here especially in minnesota um mm-hmm. east coast kids maybe not don't even know where bismarck is on a map maybe but um that's that's where i'm fortunate because it kind of sells itself but that's the hard part of of uh you know when you're we're scouting for the North American League team. And then when you're scouting for a USHL team, like uh, obviously me for Tri City, it's kinda it's easy to pick out a kid who's gonna be you know, the best player on the ice. I mean like a lot of people can go and be like, oh, you know, Will Scahan, best player, like easy. So now it's how does he fit in with your program? Or, you know, if, if it's a future draft kid, like this year we have the OH going to be drafted, like what does it look like when he in two to three years or when, you know, when you would estimate him uh, getting to, to your program? Like how is his game going to develop? Is he already tapped off where, like I talked about, there's some of those high-level Bantam kids that, we're the best at the time that aren't even playing. Like you mm-hmm. can't find those kids, you know? Mm-hmm. So if you're lucky enough to find a kid who maybe has a lot of those tools that hasn't really went through puberty yet, like those kids normally always pan out. I mean, mm-hmm. I would put like, I had Jack and Blake in Bantam, like mm-hmm. he would, he would be in that category. Like, like yeah. now he's grown and stuff like he's a stud. Um, but that's a, that's the hard part. And then also, you know, you got to kind of be like, okay, well, I just cover Minnesota for Tri-City. So then I'll cover, now I'll do like a cross reference when maybe it's tier one elite leagues in Blaine or something like that. Or I go down to Shattuck and I go watch that. So now I got to take so-and-so player who I really like for, for the draft uh, for us as Tri-City. And like then compare him to what does he look like against like a a kid from the Colorado Thunderbirds or Compuware mm-hmm. or Static or Culver or Mount St. Charles or something like that. So and then you compile your list as a as a whole staff and then you kind of just 
you know, I give GMs <laughs> in the USHL a lot of credit, honestly. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a right. Lot. It's a lot. It, it sounds like a lot. You have to, a lot of balls you have to juggle. And so my question is, so say you're looking at a kid for Bismarck, are you, do you have the conversations with the parents of, hey, we think that he would benefit greatly from from playing with Bismarck, getting more minutes, top line minutes versus playing in the USHL, not playing as much. Do you have those conversations with parents and and are they receptive to that? Do they get that or they fight you on that sometimes? I would say some some parents get that. You definitely have those conversations. Um, you know, those conversations may happen later on in the in the process yeah. you know after they may go to their ushl camp you know but i always tell kids you know and and this may be the coach in me that cares about the player i'm like hey i, I hope you play in the ushl i mean it's the best junior league you could yeah. play in right so i'm like if you don't or something happens or you don't like your ice time or, or whatever you know that by you tendering in Bismarck, this gives you a, a good backup plan, right? A, a good backup option, you know. And we'll never tell a kid like you shouldn't go to the USHL. Like we 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 won't do that. And mm-hmm. Bismarck never have, never will. I won't. I wouldn't work there if that was the case. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- those are just being upfront and honest. Like, hey, we're taking you. I think you know you're a, a guy who's in between. Depending on how you do the rest of the year, that's obviously going to you know, extend into what you're probably going to be in the USHL or what or whatever. But I'm like, I hope you go play there, and I hope you get minutes. And you know, like we're just a backup option for you at that point. Yeah, I think that's important because I think in the development process, I've always believed, you know, even when the kids are younger, like maybe it's better to play Pee Wee A and play more than not play as much on the double A team or even, you know, a lot of times it's Bantam double A versus high school. Like, you know, there's that, there's that time when like more minutes and more puck touchers can help you more in the long run. And I think people need to understand the big picture sometimes, you know, what, what is the ultimate goal? Is it, is it the NHL? Is it college hockey? Is it, making a junior team. So I think that's important. And I think sometimes parents and kids need to understand that sometimes more ice time and more puck touches is, is going to be more important for the future in the long run. Right. For sure. Yeah. I, I, I think like so many people are in such a hurry all, yeah. all the time, you know, where I think like I alluded to, I think like you just need to be present with where you're at and good things will happen you know yeah like it, you know like we i i was fortunate enough to coach like tommy cronin for example at yeah at st thomas academy like committed division one on a full ride and he like didn't even make the his first year he didn't even make the double a team at edina for bantam right so it's like yeah you know I, there is no everybody has it's so cliche but everybody has a different path but Mm -hmm. it's true Mm -hmm. i mean there is there's not a cookie cut example of this is what you do and this is how you make it because if that was the case then everybody would make it and they would have another professional league here in the united states in canada because everybody would make it but it's not like that so um yeah i don't i agree to you i think it's important to just not rush the process yeah and that and i and that's what i do in the strength and conditioning realm it's it's you know it's it's a process it's it's not just one off season or showing up for one four week segment of an off season and think oh you know i'm gonna get bigger and faster no it's a process it's a it's a year to year embracing you know once you start strength training for example like you can't stop you can't like take well, I'm not going to show up for another six weeks. And then you're starting over again. I think the strength and conditioning, the sports performance, it helps enhance that growth and development. And then the kids who embrace all of it, they're the ones who have success. You know, they're the ones that keep going up and up over time, you know, versus just 
being on the top team and then thinking everything's going to be gravy, right? For sure. And like I can see it in your shoes. I could see a kid who may they may be the same age and they want to maybe rush to get to the weight that someone who's stronger than them get is yeah. at. Or, you know, I'm yep. sure that happens a lot. And where you're you have to be like, hey, like we gotta get your technique down, like you'll get there or we just, you know. Yeah. So that you're in the same same boat where, you know, I feel like sometimes and it may sometimes come from from parents that you know they're like let's rush the kid into this like mikey is playing at you know so and so school on the varsity slash jv team as a a ninth grader or something like where the other kid may not even be remotely ready like what just go play bantam for another Mm -hmm. year and then you know keep developing your game and keep getting better and i mean that's where, and I I feel like kids play, uh, they travel so much, to, you mm-hmm. know, where I like, I'm a, and, and they don't get a break from on the ice, where I think it's important to, for, you know, people to spend more time like training and getting bigger, faster, stronger. Because in, in the long run, that's what's really going to help you. Oh, a hundred percent. And I can go on about that. Like, I just, yeah, for sure. I, I, I think, uh, I think parents, and kids have that fear of missing out that FOMO sometimes you know and it's like sometimes it's like take take a break you don't need to skate five times a week in June and July like I I go crazy when you know kids don't show up to my workouts because they're skating it's like well what's more important you know like right now and it's tough it's a tough sell because like I said that fear of missing out and I get it there's you know, USA Hockey has their national camps and they have their, you know, St. Cloud has their, and you have your districts and all that. But when you go outside of that with, I got to go to this camp five days a week, you know, I, I you know, so-and-so goes to that and he's playing in the USHL or, you know, he, he was drafted. It's like, you know, you, you have to know where you stand and yeah, like you just got to, put in the work and sometimes putting in the work outside of actually playing the game is going to help you in the long run. And it's, it's, like I said, it's a tough sell, especially with, like we talked about, you know, kids want it now and parents want it now, but it's the process, right? right? For sure. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So obviously you got a lot going on. You know, what, what are your goals, Nico? Or coach, you know what? What are your goals professionally? What do you want to do? Like, I think honestly, like you should be coach. You should be the head coach for a high school team for sure. But maybe maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to keep kind of doing what you're doing. Maybe you want to be a GM or a scout for an NHL team. Like, what do you what do you want to do? Or you just kind of going day to day and seeing where it, it, this game brings you? Yeah, I kind of you know I've been offered some some jobs at higher levels and and things like that. Um, I don't know. Right now, I really like it. I mean, it's nice to be able to to come home every night and with my wife and my dog and um, spend time at home. Um, you know, eventually I will get to that point. But I really currently I really like coaching the high school age uh, group of, of kids. I think it's like it's a great age, and um, I don't I I don't need the title of head coach for a high school team like next to my name like I could really care right. less to yeah. be honest. like it doesn't doesn't matter to me mm-hmm. um the boys know how much I care about them and how much time I put in with like that's all that really matters to me so um I think the right opportunity will come around when you know you're least expecting an opportunity to come around and, and at that point then I'll reevaluate you know where I'm at with my current sales job and, and everything like that. But, um, you know, I also, it's, it's hard when, you know, you may have a, a family that comes into, you know, to come play for me at Cretan or something. And, um, you know, you sit down with them and they tour the school and all that. And for me not to be there for all their years, 
when the kids make a you know a significant move to come into to the school, I think that's wrong. So, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to sit there and talk to a family and a, a, a prospective player and and lie to them about that. So, um, well, uh, just yeah, kind of take it day by day, I guess, and just stay present with where I'm at, try to do the best with uh, where I'm at, try to continue to develop. Uh, hockey players at Creighton um, into being the best uh, student athletes as, as they can be, and you know, hopefully, watch them continue to play at, at higher levels. And you know, like Will knows this from me coach at St. Thomas Academy. Like, I'm not a big wins loss guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think winning becomes a, a byproduct of development and developing the players. So by you making players on your team better, the players want to win the state tournament. Everybody and you know, once October rolls around, they're like, what are your team goals? And every team in the state can be like, get down to the X in St. Mm-hmm. Paul, you know, where we don't talk about that as a, as a group. I don't talk about that. Um, you know, we talk about just trying to get as many guys into, you know, drafted in the USHL or, you know, into a North American league spot or committed college and stuff like that. We talk about that stuff and um, the better you can make your players, you know, I, I truly believe the, the, the longer uh, your season's going to be and, and the players obviously want that. So um, it's kind of, they just go hand in hand. And I'm, I was a believer of that since Bantam. So. Love it. That's awesome. That's fantastic. And I think, like I said before, like your relationship with your players, like that, that's what you get. You get these kids that, you know, players need to know how much you care. And and I, I don't have a doubt that they don't know that. And just seeing these, seeing the amount of kids who have gone on to do great things under your coaching and guidance, whether it's, you know, one season or it's every summer with blue army, like it, it's pretty neat to see. And so, you know, that's why I wanted to have you on. I just think you're a, um, an asset to the game of hockey, not only in Minnesota, but on a national level as well. So that being said, really I really appreciate I, that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And um, yeah, thanks for everything. And I just want to, you know, say thanks for coming on and really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, yeah, we'll have you on again sometime. Yeah, that was awesome. Great chatting with you, Sean. I think you do amazing thing you're a great resource for for the kids um and you know just hockey players in general um you have a wealth of knowledge that you can give back to uh you know players and you know i think you're going to be there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to continue to to work with you i think you just have a really good mindset and um i think you're able to speak with the kids too on a you know, a level of, you know, you've been around the game for a while and, um, you know, you've worked with a lot of NHL players. And I think just the mental grind of the game too, you're able to help kids out with where I don't really necessarily think that uh, they're getting that. And it's important too, um, you know, for, for people listening that, you know, I think kids, a lot of those conversations that happen around the dinner table at night about how good they're, they, the kids or the parents, think their kid are and stuff like that and um i think it's important to have a little adversity and and really earn um your opportunities um and i think the more high school coaches that can have their players earn opportunities and not just give them opportunities um i think the the better the product is going to continue to get in minnesota so i love that that's a great that's a great point um that's awesome well well thanks for coming on buddy and uh yeah we'll do it again sometime sounds good thanks john